Hi guys, Francois here from the Clear to Send podcast. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to set up an API on the Ingenious Cloud. Uh, so we recorded an episode on, you know, a Wi-Fi for SMBs and talking about the Ingenious solution. It's episode number 214. Uh, so if you want to listen to it, you can go to cleartosend.net slash 214. And this video is complementary to that episode. And I'll show you exactly how to, you know, set up uh, the cloud and add an AP to the Ingenious Cloud. It's actually pretty easy. So first thing you need to do is you need to navigate to the cloud interface, which is cloud.ingenious.ai. And you can create an account if you don't have. What I did is I used my Google uh, account. And when you log in, it's going to ask you, you know, in which region you are. Um, and, and then you'll be pretty much in. Um, since it was the first time I was logging in, you'll see that it's gonna, you know, help me uh, a little bit to you know, find my way around. Uh, and it's a, you know, pretty easy, uh, simple dashboard. And the first thing you did, I did was to add an organization uh, that I call Clear to Send. And this is how you can organize your different sites if you have different sites, for instance. Um, and then under your organization, you can add a network. Uh, so here I just named it clear to send and under the network, that's where you, you will configure, you know, the different SSID and that's where you will add your access points. You can also add switches to uh, the engineers cloud, they have uh, cloud switches. Uh, and then I just deleted the default organizations just to, to clean up a little bit. Uh, and then what you can do is you can co uh, create different hierarchies. So if you wanted to create, you know, one group for, you know, my, my studio here and another one for Rowell, uh, a studio where he lives, and we wanted to have different networks, different societies and such, we could actually do that. Uh, so here in this, you know, in this video, I created the, the folders here. I never used them. I, I reused the clear to send network, but you could do it that way if you wanted to, uh, to, to have different networks. Um, then, uh, you know, if you go to the inventory, that way you'll see all the equipment that you'll add to uh, the dashboard, to the cloud, uh, under the organization, you can actually uh, share or invite people. So here, uh, I'm just inviting Roel, uh, to the dashboard tree so he can actually add equipment or he can manage the equipment and you'll see you have different, you know, rights, viewer, admin, um, and, and so if, if you do that, I will send an email to the person and they can log in, uh, and then they can just actually, you know, start uh, using the, uh, the cloud that you give them access to the cloud. So this can be nice if you have, you know, it support group, someone helping you out. Uh, and this is the, the dashboard. So obviously I have nothing connected, so that's pretty useless for now, but I'll show you once we have stuff connected. Uh, so here, if you go to the SSID, you'll see that they have a default SSID. Um, and here I just wanted to add one. Uh, I just, you know, a very simple SSID. I called it uh, CTS Ingenious uh, Wi-Fi 6 because we 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 um, uh, we actually have a Wi-Fi 6 AP from Ingenious. They, they sent us one to test out. And as you can see, they, they support, you know, pretty advanced uh, things here. They even support WPA3. Um, so if you have, you know, devices that support that, that that's pretty nice. Uh, they support 11R, 11W, uh, you can, you know, uh, specify your VLAN if you have different VLAN in your organization and you have a couple of advanced feature, you see they have band, uh, you know, load balancing, band select type of, of features. Uh, and then you see at the top, you have different tabs. You have the traffic shaping if you want to limit the traffic per user or per SSID. Uh, they have the captive portal, a uh, different way to authenticate the users. Let's say if you have a guest network, uh, or you can even enable the captive portal if you have, you know, WP, uh, WPA personal, and you have different options here for the authentication. You see social login, click through. It's actually pretty nice. You can redirect to an external captive portal if you have some. Um, and then you'll see at the top, you have the splash page tab and you'll be, uh, you'll be able to actually customize that page. And I know engineers is working on that. So they'll probably, you know, enhance that in the future. Uh, you can, you know, schedule your SID if you work in retail for, in for instance, and you only want to allow for specific hours, you could do that. And you have like Mac blacklist as well with the access control. All right. So that, that's pretty much what I did here. 
and then I uh, navigate it to the general settings, and that's where you specify, you know, your your country, and that that will be important for you know the radio settings, uh, and then I have a specific uh, settings for the AP. You can disable the LED, which is pretty nice. You can change the configuration of the LAN ports, um, and and such. And then I went to the radio settings to configure the radios, right? And here, here detected, I'm in Canada. And you can configure your 2.4 channels, your 5 gig channels. You notice that it's only Uni 1, Uni 3 uh, with the API I have. Um, so it doesn't support uh, DFS, I guess, for now. And then you can change the default, um, uh, the minimum data rates if you want to. Uh, you can set the limit. Uh, you can disable you know, support for ABG if you don't want backward compatibility. Um, and you can uh, enable mesh if you have different APs and you want to allow them to connect via, via mesh. Uh, so I think it's pretty nice radio settings, apart from the, uh, the you know, not, not supporting DFS, but apart from that, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, and then, um, you know, I'm pretty much ready to add my AP by, by then, right? Uh, to add the AP, it's actually very convenient to do it from the iPad application, right? So on the iPad, you can download the Ingenious Cloud application, um, and you'll see when it, it was installed, uh, it will just prompt you for you know the login information as well. Uh, so here again, I used my Google account to to log in. And since I use the same account, you'll see that I will get access to the exact same information. So I should be able to see my organization, uh, my network and such, All right? So here I can see clear to send. And then you click on the plus uh, on the bottom to add an AP. You can add a name or prefix to the name. So I just call it, you know, Francois Recording Studio. Um, and then after that, it's gonna ask me to scan the the you know the code bar the barcode at the at the uh, you know on the on the AP so yeah you can take the AP here you see it's actually connected I connected to my internet and then here it's just gonna you know take that little uh, barcode and then it's gonna detect the AP the serial number and such and you can register it in the portal right and that's that's pretty much all you have to do from the application right and you'll see here in the inventory I have one device and now I can go back to uh, the actual portal. And if I go back to the portal under the inventory view, um, uh, if I, you know, here it tells me in the notification that, you know, a device got registered with my organization, right? Um, but it's not done. We, now we need to go back to the inventory and we need to assign that uh, AP to a site, right? To a network. So here I can just select it and I can click on assign to network and I can select the clear to send network. And now if I do that, it should start, you know, broadcasting that SSID that I just created earlier, right? So if I go back to dashboard, I see that I now have one AP online, right? That, that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, and if I go on the AP list, I can see that you know, different details. I can see the version and they tell me they have a new version available. So, you know, we'll try the beta one. Uh, I'm in my lab here just to test. So, but that's fun. Uh, you'll see that they also show you that uh, you can set up a maintenance window. Uh, I just wanted to upgrade it right away. So I just, you know, clicked on upgrade now. And when you do that, it will just, you know, upgrade the AP. Uh, so at that time, my AP can reboot it with the new firmware. Um, and if you check the uh, notification, uh, you see that, you know, it's telling me that it's, you know, it's upgrading. Um, and if you wait a little bit and uh, you uh, refresh the page here, it should tell you that it's, uh, it's updated. You have a detailed view. And then here you see the version should, should be the new one, 1.3.4. Uh, and then this view also gives me a little bit more information about the EP. You know, it gives me the channel, the transmit power. I can uh, blink the LED. So I click on that and the, the LED of the AP just blinked uh, all of them at once. So it's pretty nice. Uh, on the right side, you can see some real-time meters as well. Uh, and then here you can see that it's actually broadcasting 
the the two SSIDs, the one I created and the default one, right? Uh, so we'll go and, and, and delete the default one after that to just clean it up a little bit. And then you can change radio settings per AP if you want. If I wanted to change the transmit power just to that AP, I could do that as well here. Uh, if we click on the AP view, you also have access to some of the settings, right? And not everything, but you also have, and you can, I like the, the picture as well. You can add a picture uh, to have everything documented in the cloud. Here, I'm just deleting the default SSID, so my AP is only broadcasting the, the new one. Um, and here I can see the channels, I like that. If I go back to the dashboard, I can see I have you know, my AP. I didn't have a client yet uh, um, connected to the AP. Uh, and you'll see that later on, I'll, I'll connect a client. Uh, I have one client here, so. Uh, we can actually go back to the detail view and under the detail view, uh, you will see the different uh, clients. You have a tab called clients. It will show you the different clients here. You can see I have my iPad. I connect it to the SSID. I can see the bit rate. Um, I can, you can, they also show you the, uh, the, um, the uh, RSSI. If I go if I go to the client view, you know I can see all the clients connected to which AP, uh, and I can have you know all this information here. The RSSI you see the RSSI they show you some bars, but if you actually hover uh, over it, it will show you the DBM value, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then you also have some applications, you know, um, typical application that tell you what you're using, uh, and you'll see what I've been using it you can get a little bit more detail as well here so overall it's pretty nice and that only took to to set it up uh so you can be a, a pretty much up and running in in like 10 minutes right uh and then on the dashboard you'll see i uh, have a preview um roel and i set it up at our house we're gonna you know generate some traffic and then share some of the results and screenshot with you um you know, doing the, the podcast. So if you want to learn about our experience of us using the solution for a little bit, you can go to clearsand.net slash 214 and we'll talk about, you know, uh, what we've done and, and what what worked really well for us, uh, what didn't work. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try to see how this solution could be a good fit for uh, some SMBs companies out there. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.